Did you know the government operates a kind of suggestion box for cutting the budget, and better yet, tens of thousands of ideas, big and small, smart and kind of silly, have poured in. One contributor suggested trimming federal lawns with government goats. But some of the ideas are actually pretty good, and almost none of them have been implemented. David Farenthold, who joins us now, spent lots of time <laughs> digging through this program. Your story ran uh, today on the front page and, and had some really interesting examples. But I'm wondering, in all those hours digging through these files, what sense you got out of these ideas? Well, this is a program that President Obama set up in 2009, and the aim was to get good ideas from federal workers on the front lines. And some people out there skeptically might think, well, federal workers, they're not going to have, you know, they're not going to be the most ambitious about cutting the federal government because they depend on it. But it actually was a surprisingly ambitious set of ideas, and they could vote up or down. So, you know, you could both suggest ideas and vote on the ideas of others. And the ones that they voted up showed a lot of am ambition to, to change things. You could tell they were as frustrated by the waste that they saw as people on the outside are watching, you know, watching it happen. Uh, what were some of those top ideas? Well, some things like there's a thing called use it or lose it budgeting. Basically, mm -hmm. agencies have to spend, effectively have to spend all their money by the end of the year or they won't get the same amount of money next year. And so these folks had watched their bosses blow a bunch of money at the end of the year so they could get the same budget. They thought that was wasteful. So people complain about the fact that every branch of the service, including the Navy and the Air Force, have their own kind of camouflage. Huh. And the government pays to design all those kinds of camouflage and keep them separate. And they complained about... Um, I complained about something called the Paperwork Reduction Act. This really blew my mind. This is amazing. This is something where at the end, it's called Paperwork Reduction Act, but it requires some legalese, a few paragraphs of kind of gobbledygook to be added to the end of some forms. Okay, that makes the forms a page longer. When you print <laughs> them out, that makes extra paperwork. And you could tell people were just pulling their hair out. And what does that even, I don't even understand. I think that the legalese says something about how we'd really like for you not to print this form and we want you to know that we reviewed it to make sure this form is as short as it could possibly be, but that disclaimer makes the page longer and so you print out extra paper. That's the sort of thing these people saw every day and wanted to change. And when someone says get rid of the paragraphs, what stops that common sense thing from happening? Well, I think in that case it may be that Congress passed the Paperwork Reduction Act, but it, in this, but. In a lot of these cases, you saw these ideas, these very ambitious ideas that were voted the most popular by the workers using the site go by the wayside. And the administration chose, as we said in the story, 67 ideas to implement. Out of 87,000. Out of 80, 86,000. Okay. But they would often sort through those ideas and find, more, instead of idea number one, the most ambitious idea voted up by everybody, they'd find idea 7,000. And in many cases, some cases those required actual change, but in a lot of cases they chose ideas that happened to coincide with what they were already doing. And so they could say, look at this great new idea. Well, it turns out to be something that the government was already doing. It doesn't require a lot of new action. When that was the point of the program was to bring in new ideas that weren't being heard before. You also had this example of someone suggesting they stop uh, handing out bound printed copies of the U.S. legal code. Heck, we can just go on our government computers and read it online. That's right. Uh, so a guy who's a lawyer at the Treasury Department says, look, I get, uh, 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 you think of the U.S. code, maybe it's one book. No, it's like 36 books. Buying a bound copy for each government lawyer costs $1,240 at least per person. And so those just sit on the shelf because the government also pays for Lexus Nexus subscriptions. And so they just look things up online. This guy said, well, forget it. Don't buy the book. Let me just have the subscription that you're already paying for. Obama in person, Obama has a teleconference with the, with the, the finalists that year. And he says, that's a great idea. You know, let's do it. But the government applies it as narrowly as possible. They apply that change only at his little agency within the Treasury Department, not the whole department, not the whole government. And so the savings might have been $180,000 a year and said they were $16,000. Uh, and then you interviewed him. He was a, a wonderful guy, a very nice person. And, I, and he, I said to him on the phone, didn't you mean, I read your original suggestion. I know that you wanted the idea to be much more broadly, that you saw this as a change the whole government could make. And there was a pause, and then you could hear on the other end of the phone a government public relations official say, you can't speak for other agencies. And so he didn't, I mean, he didn't come out and say, yes, this is terrible, they screwed up my idea. He was very nice about it. But you could tell that his original idea had been greatly watered down. Yeah. Uh, Republicans also made their attempt to let the public... Uh, weigh in on cuts. How's that worked out? Well, they had something called the U-Cut program. And the idea was every week the, the Republicans would nominate three ideas and there'd be an online vote. Some of them never even got written down as bills at all. They would say, you got this bill introduced and then nobody would act on it. So in the end, uh, just two of those ideas became law. 
It's really interesting stuff. This is sort of your beat, and you did a story a few weeks ago on this airport out in Oklahoma, right. and we have an update. Right, Lake Murray State Park Airport, which we talked about a few weeks ago, an airport that had basically no traffic at all, no planes, but still got a lot of money from the federal government. The state has voted to shut that airport down and save the government $150,000. So that's uh, it's a little bit, a little, one little step along the way. Okay, good stuff. Good to see you. You too, thank you.